Coinbase uh, calling on the SEC to approve Grayscale's application to launch a spot Ethereum ETF in a letter to the SEC. Coinbase chief lawyer saying, quote, Ether's proof of stake has demonstrably strong governance that exhibits robust characteristics across ownership concentration, consensus, liquidity and governance, mitigating risks of fraud and manipulation. Joining us right now is Grayscale CEO Michael Sunshine. It's not that often when one of your competitors says, hey, uh, go, go help these folks. <laughs> um, well, we, we do have an application on file. Uh, Grayscale sponsors ticker ETHG, right. Grayscale Ethereum Trust, largest Ethereum fund in the world. Um, an Ethereum, spot Ethereum ETF is a matter of when, not a matter of if. And, uh, and you say that because with such confidence. <laughs> I say that with confidence because my team has been doing the tough work to move this industry forward, work constructively with regulators, focus on you know, disclosure, investor right. protections. And um, that's been true for Bitcoin. Proud of the work we did with GBTC. And now I yeah, you hope think, to do that look, with Ethereum. Look, it, it took a lawsuit to get Gary Gensler to back down on this, right? I mean, I, and we just had Gary uh, here recently, and, and you saw that interview. I'd love to get your reaction to it. But clearly, you know, left to his own devices, this is not the outcome that he would have preferred. Mm -hmm. I think that's, in, 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 at least in between the lines, that's what I think he has said. Well, he actually wrote um, a, a pretty strong dissenting letter right. um, around this uh, and really focused on the grayscale lawsuit the day that the approvals and, for spot Bitcoin ETFs came and out. And so, which then begs the question, on the Ethereum front, if that is to move forward in a meaningful way, does that require another suit? It's too early to say. It's too early to say. I think we have a similar dynamic in the market where the SEC has allowed for and approved uh, Ethereum futures ETFs to come to market. Uh, the data suggests in a very similar way to Bitcoin that spot Bitcoin and uh, Bitcoin futures have an inextricable tie. The markets have a 99.9% .9 correlation. Same is true around Ethereum. And so we do have a very similar dynamic here. Give us just a little bit of a, a behind the scenes over the last month and a half. Uh, since this has, has now happened, there have been outflows from, from, from your firm, a lot of inflows, apparently, uh, to BlackRock and some of the others. I also now seeing your ads on subways and other places. How has the business even changed? Well, I think it's about audience, right? I think that GBTC is uplisting, having you know come to the New York Stock Exchange, paved the way for all these other issuers to come to market as well, has really opened the opportunity for a much larger audience of investors to participate in this asset class for the first time. The products are functioning very, very well, tight spreads, closely tracking right. the underlying Bitcoin. So it's been a major success. But strategically for you, is your goal to get more inflows or frankly just to prevent outflows given that you were the leader in this space sure. to begin with? Well, I think it's actually the question we're actually getting mostly from investors now is where else should they be investing, right? A lot of investors were able to benefit from being in Bitcoin as early as they were because we were in Bitcoin as early as we were. And so they're looking across the rest of the Grayscale product family at other assets at other areas of the market and where they can get involved in diversifying their crypto exposure. Okay, so what, what, is, what does that look like then to you? Well, so we're seeing investors actually taking note of Ethereum, right, ticker ETHE, but Grayscale now has, you know, well over a dozen in products in the market, and we're seeing robust trading volumes there, investors looking to deploy capital in other areas of the market, some of them even taking a sector-based approach to their crypto investing. Do you think your company, given where you are in this space, is an independent firm two years from now? I ask because we now have a dozen companies that effectively are now trying to be in your space. BlackRock, mm -hmm. of course, sort of rolling in at a, at a very aggressive speed. Sure. You do have an enormous amount of money uh, under management, uh, if you will. But part of strategically you have to sort of deal with is this idea that they could go elsewhere. You have fees that are higher than most of the others. Would it make sense for you to be with somebody else? It could. Um, I, I would be lying if I didn't say that those types of conversations and those opportunities um, over time have started to present themselves at Grayscale. I think the investment community as a whole really took note of the Grayscale lawsuit um, and the victory that we had in that lawsuit. And so, um, you know, our, our eyes and ears are open and, and sometimes right. people are approaching us about strategically working together, um, but, but right. nothing to announce this morning. On the Bitcoin front, is, is your sense, I mean, we haven't gotten to a place where all the advi you know, advisors are all approved yet yeah. to be offering this as a, as a product. 
six months from now they may. Mm -hmm. How does that change the balance of all of this? When are we going to see? I mean, I don't, we're seeing meaningful trading, but maybe we're going to are we going to see lots and lots of trading? Is just is there this still this huge like holdler community? <laughs> and then what does that mean to this long term in terms of pricing? Well, I do think the advised market is very, very important for Bitcoin, for crypto in general. It's about $40 trillion worth of advised wealth here in the U.S. Over the next couple of months, I do think you will see these products begin to get approved on advisory platforms. And, you know, even just yesterday, my team was holding a seminar uh, in Dallas with investment professionals. And it's clear that there is still a knowledge gap um, amongst those professionals as to how to approach these conversations with their clients. So for us, it's a reminder that we have to educate advisors because they're either scared, um, right. they don't know how to approach this, it's so different from everything else they invest in, or they're getting added pressure from their clients, seeing the returns, seeing what having this exposure in those portfolios right. can do, um, and we have to bridge that gap for them. Okay.